Anjali Nair, Hawa Esaman, and a very special guest from Liberia, Silas Siakor. project got started in the first place? You began it several years ago. Yeah, sure. Actually, I didn't start out my career as a filmmaker. I actually was an environmental scientist, a climatologist. And so um, I had been kind of writing about the subject for a number of years um, and always wanted to kind of dig beneath the surface of what it really meant to, to you know, have a land grab or how does a country lose or communities lose 25% of their country to these types of big deals. And so while writing um, an article uh, for Nature Magazine, which is a really big science magazine, um, I actually called Silas um, for a quote. I think that was back in 2009. And it was over this terribly scratchy line, I think, from Kenya to Liberia. And even then, I knew that he had this incredible story to tell. And that it was the voice of like so many places that I would reported on for so long. Um, and that it was, a, it was an ongoing story, that this doesn't just happen one day, that it's something that takes years to happen, and it's just because these stories are not sort of elevated, that we never actually hear them. So these things kind of go unsaid, and we hear the narrative, you know, when communities have lost their land, and, you know, there's desperation and so on. So um, it was really an opportunity to kind of collaborate with somebody who's so fascinating, who I admire so much. Um, and then um, Hal and I met at a... Uh, a premiere of Sex in the City. <laughs> We've been friends for about a decade. I don't know if you want to um, Choice of film for our, uh, for our friendship. Not this one. Uh, um, when she and I got to talking, we discovered that even though she and I were coming at um, filmmaking or at least storytelling from different sides, because I'm fundamentally actually we did want to make something together that represented or that talked about stuff that we felt really strongly about. I mean, the topic of um, home grid solutions, the topic of um, local agency was something that we felt very strongly about. So when uh, Anjali spoke to me after she had that scratchy conversation with Silas, she said, listen, I think I found the thing that we could work on together. And I said, absolutely, that's the one. And yeah. So uh, Silas, uh, you had seen some uh, maybe early rough cut of this film. I think this is the first time you've sat and watched the whole uh, finished thing. Um, what does it mean to you to have this portion of your life uh, in this film? I'm not sure. You know, I can describe how I feel right now. Um, but certainly I'm very happy that it has come to a very uh, successful conclusion. Um, and I would have wished that a lot of young people out there will also uh, use our story um, to inspire them to do uh, similarly in their own communities. Because I know this is not just a story about Liberia. It is a story that's very common across Africa and other parts of the world. Um, Anjali, the, the Timby uh, app that we see Silas using as a tool is something that you helped create. Uh, can you talk about uh, your work on that and maybe just a little bit more about what it is? Yeah, absolutely. It's actually something that we've all worked on, that we've all collaborated on. Uh, Timby actually grew out of our desire to kind of t like change the narrative uh, that was coming out of these stories. I mean, how do you get those perspectives from the ground? When you come in as a film crew, you're, you're really not going to get what's happening on the ground. So how could we use the technology that's in everybody's hands to kind of document what was happening in their own communities? And this, you know, what you see in the story is one of like dozens of, of projects that um, Silas and the SDI have like really documented over. So it was, a, it was kind of weaving these stories together so that we could get a full narrative. 
Um, but, um, you know, when we, we talked about it, we were like, how do we get people to kind of bring this information? Uh, we realized that it was actually something that everybody really wanted anyway. And, and Silas rightly pointed out, there's no way that we're going to be able to, to get people to use these cameras unless it's actually really useful for them documenting their own work. And we, we said, okay, well, that's something that we really need to take away and improve it and kind of iterate it and so on. Um, and it's been quite uh, a journey because now it's in over 15 countries and we're constantly expanding. So young people all over are doing the same thing of, of trying to change their backyards using this. But it really grew out of the film. Um, Silas. <laughs> Silas, we uh, see that you're now running for office. You've got an election coming up in uh, a few weeks. Um, can you talk about what are some of the, the key issues of this election? Well, um, it happens that one of the themes that I'm kind of really pushing back on is has to do with land. Um, because uh, as a woman, you've got no right to the land. So I am running in the district uh, of my maternal uh, home. So I am having to make the case that even though this is my mother's home, I have a right to uh, that community as well. Um, so for me, this is a personal uh, struggle. Uh, in addition, coming out of my work at the SDI and also going into politics, um, it has given me an opportunity to bring some of the issues I worked on in the NGO community into the political arena. So it is a, a bit of a personal struggle, it is both a personal uh, campaign as much as it is about my community. All right, let's take some questions uh, from the audience. If you raise your hand, I will call on you. The light is bright on me, so uh, right, wave, yeah, right here. In front of me. Silas, what gave you the confidence to face down the government? How did you believe, come to believe that you personally could make a difference against such a big enemy? That's a difficult one, um, but I think uh, what I what it all boils down to is a, a kind of desperation, positive desperation, um, realizing that something needed to be done, realizing that nobody else would do it on our behalf. Um, we therefore had to take matters into our own hands. Um, so for us, it was a uh, kind of an overnight. A realization that we needed to do something. This is something that has been with me from the very beginning. Uh, I think you will recall at one point I say, growing up, I never knew enough. And corruption was a big part of the reason why I never knew enough growing up. Um, so as an adult, I felt a personal responsibility that I had to work to change, uh, to contribute to changing that system. So I went into it unwillingly, maybe, but um, I began to like it, and here I am today. Okay, he's got another question uh, up near the top. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask about uh, the Congo and uh, the situation and what's happening also in Croatia. And uh, I personally try to avoid products that contain Congo. And um, how do you weigh this issue in Croatia? So uh, the question she was talking about palm oil and its relationship to deforestation and um, and asking what can you know ordinary people do to think about more carefully about the products they use so that they're not contributing to these problems. Well, personally, what I say to uh, people is that the product is not the problem. The skill, the model that is used for production is the problem. Um, and by that, I mean um, the skill to which they would like to cultivate, um, the skill on which they would like to plant uh, the palm in order to uh, uh, produce the product is actually the problem. The fact that the government simply uh, take the land from the communities without any consultation, that is the problem. Um, so if we can uh, put a little bit more pressure on the companies 
um, to ensure that when they acquire land, they are doing so with the consent of the communities and they are not growing on the skill on which uh, they are currently growing. Um, and they are also uh, using different um, approaches that will ensure uh, the environment is not unnecessarily destroyed. Then, of course, we would not have to make the case against the product. Um, so as an individual consumer, I would really hope that we will be asking uh, the source of the commodity that we are buying. If this is from a company that has become very notorious uh, for destroying forests, for wrecking havoc on communities, then of course the best least we can do is to uh, boycott that particular commodity. Um, just saying that I will not buy that because it is being produced as a result of uh, a lot of social uh, problems and environmental problems. I think that also adds to the pressure on the companies to be able to change their practices. So I'm sure people are thinking as a follow up to that, is there any place where there's a kind of resource of lists of, of companies to avoid because their behavior isn't good? This is a difficult question because um, there are some uh, certification bodies, they are not perfect, uh, to say the least. Um, I personally have campaigned against uh, some of their products in the past, but I can simply say that to some extent... Give us a name, tell us something to hate. Um, <laughs> we're gonna march the stores right now and we're gonna whip that shit off the shelf. <laughs> Give us a name. Well, you know, uh, this is this is a really big platform. I would be very reluctant. Uh, to call <laughs> Already a politician. <laughs> Already a politician. <laughs> all right, no, I'm kidding. Uh, all right, we've got time for one more question right here in the half. Um, this question for the directors about storytelling. So you worked on this for five or seven years. What was the struggle with the storytelling, and when did you decide, okay, now the film is finished because? You know, he's still running to be a politician. Did you consider that to be part of it? How can you talk about the storytelling? Um, absolutely. Well, we followed not only this particular uh, vein of their investigation, both in kind of illegal forestry contracts and, and Jokban clan, but I think um, the most difficult part of the storytelling was, in fact, weaving one narrative. And um, it's because the particulars of so many of these cases are slightly different, but the, deep down, it's all the same thing. Communities are not consulted for their land. Um, big companies are moving in with the kind of collusion or uh, kind of check, check mark of, of the government. So it was really a matter of, in the edit room, kind of figuring out a way and a, a kind of an in, like a, a structure for us to hang that on. And I think the real big change in our film was when we decided to move it less of a film of um, the entire issue and more hang it on Silas's passion because he's really the person that brought us into this story. He's really the person that, that kind of uh, has, has led this wave and this next generation of young activists that are kind of determining the narrative and stuff like that. And that was really how it started to really come together. So it was a lot of work in the edit room as well. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add. Um, the one thing I'd like to say is that because we started out with this very specific idea of what it is that we wanted to say and how we wanted to tell the story, after over the years as we kept filming, we had to keep reminding ourselves exactly what it is that we were saying going back to that and challenging that. Because if you take as long as we've taken, and um, you have to remember that because life happens, things change, and it's easy to get distracted because you're quite right, he's running for politics and it, it's so easy for us to keep going, it's like, oh well, when this sort of thing is happening, do we include that? Or you have to, know at which point to say, well, actually, you know what, that's another story. I think I think there was a point, too, that we were worried. We were like, oh, my God, Silas is running for politics. What does that mean for a film? So, you know, like, because obviously, I mean, we treated him, you know, what is this about the cycle? And we really got Silas to talk about, like, what, are, what is he going to face now if he's going through some of the same things that Ellen did when she was a much younger person. And she was never kind of in depth in the NGO community as Silas has for the last 
20, 30 years, 20 years. But um, it was definitely questions that we asked ourselves as, as directors. And those are the things that you kind of have to navigate because when you do start, you have an idea of what you want to do, but you never really know where you're going to end up. Well, as I said before, you're the first audience in the world to see Silas. Uh, we're so honored to have you with us. Uh, uh, thank you, John Denier, and Paula Simon for being here. And thank you. Have a good customer.